after we get down to business. All right. Uh, well, welcome everyone out. Uh, glad you glad you could join us uh, for this uh, teacher training for Cast Connect. We're really excited, and uh, we got uh, Carrie Harden will be here and talking to you guys a little bit about some teacher expectations, and then we also have um, Nicole Ortiz is joining us. Joe Rolfing from. They're from Harrisonville. Where are, guys, where are you guys from? We're from Harrisonville. Harrisonville. Yeah. And who else is joining us? Looks like Ken Peak is here. Ken, you want to say hi? Can you hear us, Ken? Scratching his head. I'm guessing you can't hear us right now. Uh-uh. And uh, Dustin Brewer, also from Belton. And uh, so awesome. Carrie, I'm going to share the screen if you want to if you want to get started. Okay. Um, I have the teacher expectation screen. In fact, I'll just share my desktop. Okay. I made a little presentation, but if we're okay with just talking. I, I don't yep, think you can hear us. Uh-uh. And uh, Dustin Brewer, also from Belton. And uh, so awesome. Terry, I'm going to share this screen if you want to. Terry, you want to go ahead and uh, can you can you guys see what we have displayed? In fact, I'll just share my desktop. One thing I might suggest. Presentation, but if we're okay with just talking. That sounded like me, but it was not me. Um, one thing I might suggest is that if you have any background noise, that you go ahead and mute your microphone. I don't. Ooh, that's like an echo. Uh, it's awesome. Carrie, I'm going to share the screen if you want to. Carrie, you want to go ahead and uh, can, you, can you guys see what we have? Dustin, welcome, man. Hey, Brad. Yep. One thing I might suggest. I'm getting a delay, a very serious delay. Yeah, I hear that, too. Does someone have uh, the YouTube video playing in the background? that you go ahead and mute your microphone? If you guys want to check that, you might have the YouTube video playing in the background and turn those ones off. There we go. Okay, are we good? All Sounds right. good. Okay, good. Okay, guys. Well, um, Brad and I are excited to meet with you guys today. We just wanted to tell you a little bit about what you can expect as an online teacher. I think um, several of you have taught online. Uh, several of you have taken online courses, but um, we just wanted to set you guys up for some success. So um, the main thing... I'm just going to talk about some of the teaching teaching points, um, and then Brad will cover Canvas with you. So please um, jump in if you have a question. But some of the expectations we have are, um, the first one is communication. It's really, really important that you communicate with your students. Um, you're going to need to check your courses. Ideally, you will check them daily for any student communication, um, That be it um, an, a Canvas inbox. I think that's what it's called, right, Brad? Canvas inbox? Correct. Okay, so be it a Canvas inbox um, or an email from a student, that, um, if you turn on your notifications and, and we'll have videos and things like that um, to show you how to do that. But just check for student communications because you are expected to communicate with your students within about a 24 to 48 hour window, um, like one business day would be ideal, especially in summer when we're on that really tight time schedule. So if you guys can just make sure you're checking your stuff, it doesn't take very long, especially with only 25 students per class, which should be our max. So Brad, did we lose you? No, I'm still here. Okay, good. Um, I just got, maybe we had somebody join us. I don't know. I just got a different screen. Um, any questions on communicating with your students? You can also communicate via announcements if you have a, a giant, you know, something to tell everybody. You can use um, your announcements page on your homepage, which many of you have probably used before. Um, grading, this is a huge form of communication for your students. So within 48 hours of student submissions, you're going to need to grade their work. Um, discussion forums are even more important because that is another form. Sometimes kids will ask questions via discussion forums. So just make sure that you're grading things in a timely manner. And our expectation at Cast Connect is that all of us are grading within 48 hours, um, two business days. Okay. Um, and also, if a student starts to fall behind, 
um, you're going to want to get in touch with somebody. So if you have kids, that, a lot of us, we've really tried to place our own kids with our, our own teachers. So I have all Pleasant Hill kids, um, but some of you have a few Pleasant Hill kids and a few Harrisonville kids and a few Belton kids. So if you have kids from all over, you need to make sure you know where they're from and if they start to get behind in their grades, you're going to need to make that connection with their um, with their site facilitator so that we can make sure that everybody is being reached and that we don't let anybody fall through the cracks. So, um, and if you have any questions about that, just let us know because we're, we're happy to give you that guidance. Um, you, like I said, contact the student's home school online site facilitator with any concerns about pace, pacing questions or grading questions. Anybody have any questions? And I'm moving kind of quick, but um, I know probably most of you are most interested in getting um, into Canvas as soon as possible. So, um, the expectations for you on a weekly basis are that you do four um, office hours a week. We ask that those be consistent. Um, I know sometimes you're going to be on vacation or you're going to have a, a camp or something that you're going to need to run. I love seeing all your faces. Um, but um, anyway, if you can try to have four consistent hours per week, that is ideal. And um, so maybe that's Mondays from 2 to 4 and you know Thursdays from 1 to 3 or whatever you want to do but make sure that your students know when when they can reach you in a hurry other than that it's that 24-hour communication rule um, and you can do Google Hangouts like this you can do a Canvas conference and Brad will Brad I don't know if you're gonna get into that but at least I'm sure you'll give them some guidance on on conferencing within Canvas because it does have a, a platform like this yeah it does have a platform um, it's, it's kind of along the WebEx platform um, and and so I mean I I probably would recommend doing a Google Hangout over um, over Canvas over the Canvas conference, but you know it's kind of sixes. So you'll you'll just definitely want to play around with those before getting started. Okay. And then um, your support, we you know you've got people in place to support you if you have questions. So um, your first line of support is your peer collaboration. So um, personal finance teachers band together, get each other's emails and I'm sure we'll have that published somewhere. Um, and that way you can reach out to the other personal finance teachers. If you have a question about the way that a question is written or an assignment or you know what, what do you think the intention of the course author was, then reach out. Um, and then tech, if you have technical support, go to your site facilitator in your building. Hopefully, we're, we won't have too much in, in terms of uh, technical difficulty. I know Harrisonville was talking about who's going to be the site facilitator, so um, we've been talking about that because somebody at the building hopefully can be a point of contact for that technical um, help. And when I say technical help, it's like, I can't get into Canvas, help me. And so um, that kind of help. You shouldn't need to you know, fix fix a mainframe or anything. Um, and then for non-technical questions, go to your site facilitator because they will reach out to either the course author or um, you know that other teacher or whatever. So um, last but not least, your course dates run June 2nd to June 27th. Um, if you're going to be out of town during that time, just plan ahead so that you can still communicate with your students and you, you are sure to have Wi-Fi wherever you go. Brad will discuss the opening and closing dates of courses so your kids cannot get into these courses before June 2nd. And then your pay, which um, I know we would all do this for free, right? But um, your pay will be usually done at the end, most school districts I think. I, I know Pleasant Hill, Belton I think is, I don't know about Harrisonville, but we're getting paid at the com upon completion of the course. So once your course is done, that's when you get your money and you are paid based on the number of students that you had at the drop date. So the second day of class, June 3rd, close of business or midnight or whatever, that's the day you should know, okay, I had I had one kid drop, I've got 24 kids, um, we're good, we're good, that's, that's what I can expect to be paid for. Okay, that was kind of quick, but I want to leave plenty of time for Brad. Do we have any questions? Okay, we'll reach you can, out if you... you can unmute yourselves and, and and ask any questions you guys have there. Nothing. Crickets. It's you, Brad. Everyone, everyone's good to go then. Um, I, I do. I have a question. Yeah, go. Um, I don't know if you'll cover this, Brad, or what. But um, do they have to do all assignments for? Sorry, you're just too close okay. to each other. <laughs> <laughs> the aliens um, are attacking. All assignments 
assignments? Is this a one? Like, if they miss any assignments, then they are they fail the class, or is it they have to do everything? And to yeah, the expectation is that the students complete complete um, the work for the course. So I would say yes, they need to complete all their assignments and uh, and assessments to receive credit for the course. Okay. So that is a good question, and I don't know if we if we address that at any point except for now. So <laughs> thanks for asking. Kids will actually fail the course if they drop after that drop date. It's not an incomplete. It's going to be a fail. Okay. So we're really encouraging them to either drop by the drop date or push through and finish. And have you guys, um, I mean, I, I take it you all have the handbook. Um, we also shared out the, the website, and you can access that website. There's a link in the last email that I sent to you um, for that website, so make sure that you can see that. Um, here's what it looks like. You guys have all seen that? Maybe give me a thumbs up or a nod or something. Okay, yeah. and you guys can find some information up top. Uh, there's some staff information again about payment and stuff like that. It also has the start and end dates. Um, so if there's not if there's not any other questions about uh, sort of the teaching expectation, can we look at the modules and what we have in there? I'm going to switch over to. Um, so I've already signed into Canvas. And uh, as a teacher, we have the courses for, if you're in health, I believe I've already imported all of those courses into health. If you are in personal finance, the personal finance designer just sent me the email. Justin Hamilton just sent me the email confirmation saying it's complete. So I will import those at the end of this uh, Hangout. This is what it looks like uh, from a teaching standpoint. I'm, a, I'm using Firefox currently. It doesn't matter which browser you use. Um, there's also a mobile app, and so one thing I might um, encourage you at the beginning of each of the modules um, is definitely perhaps add add your own personalized introduction, maybe even a you know a short assignment or two that you ask them to complete, just so so that your students can become familiar with completing assignments in in uh, Canvas. Um, once you're signed in, you all should have received an email from me actually for teaching a course. Um, did you all get that email? Let me just confirm that. Okay. So you have have you seen any of your modules yet? Any of you? Only when mine only whenever we work together at the central office. Okay. Okay. So um, health is totally complete, and it is sitting in your. Uh, it should be waiting for you to accept that course once you sign in. Once you're signed in, you'll you'll come to the dashboard again. You'll have recent activity from your course will pop up here. So it's telling me looks like somebody submitted two announcements to this course, and there's six assignment notifications in this course. On the right side, it's prompting me to to do some of these assignments, and so it's it's saying I need to grade 21 of these technical management assignments, and I have 14. Uh, of the, the setup module assignments that need graded. And then finally below, you have sort of what's, what's coming up. And I will suggest that a great way to look at your course, just to get an overview of your course, is to check out the calendar, okay, which we're going to do that here in just a second. Um, hovering over the global navigation bar up top, you can then find your course. Um, for it, Let's take health, for instance. Ken Peek is teaching um, Cast Connect Health summer 2014 section one and so I'm gonna go into Ken's course and Ken um, you can see this course has not been published yet but he has a home page here and on the left side you have all your navigation links only the teacher will see all of these links uh, Ken has already got it set up so that he's hidden all the links that he feels the students don't need access to now hey, as Brad, the, Brad. yeah I'm going to stop you really fast because Dude. Melanie can't hear you. Um, your, her volume's really quiet, and Ken is going in and out. Um, so I just want to let you know if you can, if there's any way to up your microphone, just for, to help Melanie. And then I'm trying to troubleshoot with Ken. Yeah, I don't know if I have. I mean, mine's pinning out. At least it's showing my volume's pinning out over here. So I don't know if it's a, if it could be a speaker thing. Let me let me you're check okay. one second. You're kind of quiet. You're kind of quiet. You want me to yell more? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I want you to do. I want you to yell. Yeah. 
So my office people are saying, quiet, quiet. All right. So, um, so once you get into the course, everything's going to be set up through the modules. And so in the mo when you click on the little module section, you'll be able to see what the modules look like for that for that course. So this, these are the modules for health. And I believe he has unit one, one, two, three, four, looks like four, five modules, six modules are in there for health. Okay, within a module, there are assignments and tasks and things that your students need to complete. Um, and so you, you basically start at module one and work yourself and your students will work themselves through the module um, sequentially. Okay. Um, when a student goes goes into one of the modules, then that student can um, see what the prompt is, and it looks like this one's going to be a video. And once he's done with that task, down at the bottom, he'll have sort of the next button, and he can proceed to the next part of that module. If the if the assignment asks them to submit. That's where the student then would need to submit an assignment. And let me show you what that may look like. As a teacher, when you're in your course, down here in the bottom left is a settings tab for that course. And you can go into that. And at any point, you can click up here in the right corner. It says student view. You can click the student view and become a student in your course to see what, what, what it will actually look like. And you can actually participate as a student in the course. So I might highly recommend you all just open up your course, go to student view, and then act like you're a student going through the course, and then make the necessary modifications and changes that you feel necessary, you know, so your students can be successful in that course. Does that make sense? So, so for this one, I'll, I'll go into the modules, and it looks like it looks like I need, I have a task one and I need to, in fact this won't even, it won't let me participate it because it's not unlocked yet. Eesh, I just found a, a, an issue. So you can't participate in your course until June 2nd and the course is locked June 27th. So students can only participate in those courses between those dates. So it looks like the test student is also can't participate until those dates as well. Does that make sense? So I'm not going to be able to show you what I wanted to show you. Hello. What's up? What's up? Is that a question? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Let's run the phone. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, another thing. All of these assignments, you can see that they are currently green. And if I hover over this assignment, I can see that it says publish. If you have an assignment on here that you don't want your students to see, then you can click this green thing and you can unpublish that and now it will be sort of removed from your students view. So I can turn that back on and I can publish it. You can do that as long as the assignment has not been submitted by any of your students. Once one of your students submits an assignment, you can no longer unpublish that assignment. It will it will be available for everyone. So it's important to go through your assignments and tasks and make sure they fit with what you uh, are hoping them to be. What if you want to add a, another assignment? What if what if there's an additional task or something that you you feel you know you need to collect that on? You you are more than welcome to um, add pl click the plus button and you can add additional assignments or quizzes or files um, by following the plus button and then creating a new assignment. So I, I, I hope you probably don't have to do that at all, but I want to make sure uh, just so if you need to modify your, your, your course to be a little more custom for, for you. Um, so that's sort of how the modules work. Students will work through them sequentially. Um, sir, these modules, for example, this module won't unlock until May 30th. So it looks like he has these modules locked down until May 30th, and actually the class won't even open until the 2nd. So even though the modules will be unlocked, students can't complete anything until June 2nd anyways. Um, he also has in here um, a prerequisite. So this says in order for you to complete Module 2 material, you must complete um, Unit 1. And so he has that set up so you have to do it sort of sequentially. Uh, 
Question? Nope. All right. The the other thing I wanted to show you, um, I want to show you two other things. I want to show you grading, and I want to show you the calendar. Okay. So if I click on calendar, I can see my course. Let me jump over to June. So I can see the assignments for that course. Looks like it's loading those assignments. I don't know if I'm running into... I'll let it load. I'm going to go to grading while it's loading. Um, mainly because I have a lot of courses currently. So for grading, um, to show you grading, I'm going to go into... Um, I'm going to go into a course that I was a teacher of so you can see what some file assignments look like. When you click on grades, you select your course, you will get you will get a grade book that looks like this. Your student name's on the left, and then you have the assignments going across the top. And then finally on the end, if you have different weighting scales, you can, you can add those weighting scales in here, and then you have your assignments and your totals. So when, they, when students submit something into an assignment, it comes into here, and it lets you know, for example, this assignment, this student submitted, I've already graded this assignment, this student, I can see they submitted a video, it looks like, and I haven't graded it yet. Okay, these are discussions, and I can see I haven't graded in any of these. Notice that the background is pink. That means they submitted it after the due date. So it's still turned in. It's just I can quickly see that these are late assignments. Now, if, I, if I've already looked at these assignments and I want to just grade them, I can click in a cell, and then using the arrow keys, I can jump around and I can just enter scores for these. So if I, if I think I want to enter a, a 9 instead of a 10, I can jump and throw that in there, and then it automatically updates. Okay, so you can edit scores on the fly like that. But I can't see that assignment. In order to see that assignment, what you're going to do is click on the little blue mark, and you want to open this assignment up in SpeedGrader. What hmm. SpeedGrader will do is it will open a new tab, and it's going to show you that assignment. And SpeedGrader uses Crocodoc, so you can, you can grade this assignment. For example, if it's a Word doc or a PowerPoint or Excel, Crocodoc will let you actually comment right on the document. You click the little comment feature. I can say point comment. You know, this is a great point. I can also, if, I need, if I'm using a tablet or something, I can draw lines on here and then... Lastly, I can select or highlight different uh, sections of text and, um, and make those texts, I should be able to highlight um, different texts uh, with using the highlight tool. And then these marks will be seen by the student. Over here, I'm gonna, I can add a comment. So I want to give feedback via comment, and if you'd like, you can, you can open up the media comment tool and give them media uh, audio or video comment. Okay, I would just allow my, my webcam to be used. So you can uh, allow audio or video feedback. And then I would, of course, give them a, a score. Okay, in this example, I'm, not, I'm also including a rubric that I chose to use. I set that up ahead of time, and you can give them a score off of a rubric. Once I've given this score, I can click to, to go to the next student, and now I can pull up and I can see that Tina didn't submit her assignment and I can click and go to the next student, and I can see Sheila's. I can give her a score over here, 10 points, and I can go to the next student. So grading can be pretty quick. Um, you can see his is a small. He text entry, give him 10 points or whatever, 5 points, and then I can go to the next student. Okay, so that would be how I would grade. When students submit a Google Doc, this is a Google Doc. You can see it's submitted. Um, in fact, this is a website that she, that she submitted. Um, it takes a snapshot of that doc or that website and shows you that version the, the instant it was submitted. So you'll see the version of that Google Doc the instant it was submitted. And if you want to go to the original submission, then you can click up here and it will link back to that original submission. Once I'm done grading these things, then I can, I can go back to uh, the gradebook 
and you know continue grading or or doing whatever necessary adjustments. So you guys have some questions on on the grading or or things that would make that run smoothly. I'm going to show you what a video uh, speed grader looks like. So if your students submit a video assignment, you see it um, it will pop up in here. They can you can then play that video. I like it organized. Play that video and then you can give them their feedback and their results and then move on to the next student. Um, so questions on gradebook? Or grading. There's there's also a speed grader app. If you have an iPad, you can also do speed grading on the iPad. You need to download the speed grader app, and then you can pull in those assignments and, and do the grading via your via your iPad. So I find I, I'm kind of mixed between the two. I like the iPad for for certain uh, uh, grading things, and and I like the the uh, laptop for others. Um, if you want to do the commenting on documents, it can only be Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, or PDF uh, document. I guess Excel works too um, for documents. So that's that's kind of an overview of that course. You all should be added as a teacher in the course. Um, if you'd like to see your students under the people section, you can see right here Ken Peek is is a, is a teacher in the course. I'll add Carrie and myself. To each one of the courses, so we can uh, so we can have access to it. Um, but I'm trying to think any other questions that you, you you feel like we need to cover, since you got some time right now. And hey, if you Brad. Want, yeah, go ahead. Well, I don't know if somebody had a question, but I was I don't know what kind of schedule you work, but I will be here um, working my extra library days um, that first week of June so if you need help or you know just or a question or whatever just reach out and Brad I, I'm sure you probably work an extended contract as well yeah I'll be here the first two weeks of June okay. and and I you know I, I'd love to help as much as I can um, you know remotely so feel right. free to to make that happen yeah and you guys have, I think I added most of you in, in my, uh, onto my Google account. Um, it's, any, are you interested in learning more about uh, any features in Canvas that we can cover that would make sure you can be successful or you just want to have some time to play and then follow up with me later if you run into issues or what would you like to do, guys? I think for me the main thing would be just getting a chance to mess with it a little bit. Right. And we did that one day, so I guess I'm at least familiar with it. Uh huh. And you've seen the teacher side of it, correct? Do I know? You were on the teacher side. Yes. At, at yeah. that meeting, that's right. Yeah. So, um, so I will make sure uh, I'm going to import the personal finance modules uh, into their into their uh, into your sections, and you you've already been added as health and, and personal finance teachers into those sections already. So once that once that import happens, then you can start messing around. You know, feel free to tweak deadlines. Um, I think personal finance. He just put all the deadlines on Friday, and I kind of recommend maybe maybe having some deadlines in the middle of the week and not everything on Friday because those students are, are they're going to wait till Friday to try and do all your assignments and it's going to kill them. So, yeah. um, so I I would probably recommend tweaking that, um, which you can do. Um, Trying to see. Are there any other questions? I'm looking at the question mark uh, box right now. I think I got most of them, and most of them were technical difficulties. Okay. Um, what about the final grade? Is that just something that gets sent to you guys, or is there something special we need to do? So the final grade, we, we will pull the report, I, I believe. Uh, Carrie, help me out. What did we say on that? Are they, are they sending that to 
I that's in the handbook and I can't tell you right off the top you, the final <laughs> grades will go through I think they'll go through site facilitators though and then be passed on to guidance I'm pulling it up I, right now just to answer it to you yeah that'd be great um, Melanie I'm I'm gonna tell you if you're getting a delay shut down any extra windows that you have open yeah so it, it says here that uh, final grades a student grade report will be sent by the providing district to the sending district for documentation purposes along with the percentage grade the so, sending district, so, um, so it looks like what we're gonna do is is we can just export your grade books and then send them along so what's nice is I'm gonna be a teacher in all your in all your um, uh, module in all your courses and so if you have technical tweaks we need to do and you're not able to make it work you know you can contact me and together we can we can make it work because I have access to to making that happen so so feel free you know and don't hesitate to shoot me an email or whatever and we'll, we'll make sure we, we get you know I just want it to be successful for you guys so that's a good question about about grades. Um, what else do we got? Are you guys just super pumped, <laughs> or slightly scared, or what? what where are we? <laughs> Joe says yes. A little bit of everything. A little you, bit. Of everything. You guys can really have a lot of fun with it. You really can, um, and just know that we're here to support you while you do this and. But I think you'll enjoy it. It's a it's a different kind of interaction with your students, and and I, Brad, did, I I assume you feel the same way. I, I loved it when I fully taught online. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be different because of you know the the technology divide. I mean, you're you're not going to see these students, and so I think it's going to be a little bit tougher to build that relationship. And so I I just really encourage at the beginning, you know, really be reaching out to them and figuring out. What I mean, you you all gonna you're all gonna do it differently. What's gonna be your thing that really reaches out to these students and and helps them to be successful? Because it's gonna be brand new for all of them. I mean, brand new for all, a lot of us. And so, um, it's tough. I know I I did my masters all online, completely online, in that first class that I took. You know, it was it was a change for me. And so, um. You know, have all all of you have taken a course online? I think most of you have taken something online. I haven't. So, now, uh, who's that, Nicole? You haven't? Yeah, I haven't. Okay, I'm so a I mean, and I need to be in class. <laughs> so you'll have to find the way. I mean, one one way I encourage is you guys right within Canvas. You can you can record, you can create your own uh, a page, and you can record a video capture just like you and I are talking now. So your your students can see who you are and have that you know that face to put before they get all this assignments and tasks because it's going to be pretty quick four weeks I mean I I'm a little worried about the the time the, the timeline but um, you know we'll do it we'll work through it and, and see what happens and it's it's going to be fun first time so what what else any other questions you want me to cover anything else in Canvas or just get you guys in there and. I mean, I, I guess we could stay on the line. I could make sure you guys can jump online Canvas now, and you could just we could just have a question and answer session if you want, or what do you guys want to do? I I would prefer just getting some time to just hit and mess with it personally. Like I'm in there right now, kind of clicking through stuff, and okay, we'll look at it. Yeah. Melanie, how are you feeling? I we haven't actually gotten to speak very much, but how are you feeling about things? Oh, your microphone's not working. I'm not hearing you. Try that. Oh, no. <laughs> I can read lips. You said you you're you said you're loving it. You said you're so ready to go. Why are we having this meeting? So that's good. Um, feel, feel free, guys. I mean, I'll, I'll put you guys in it. I'll go import your content for personal finance people. Um, health is ready to go, so get in there and start messing around, tweaking it. And then, you know, send me emails. Um, you guys all have my email because you're all in this thing now. Um, and and let's just start. Let's just kind of go from there, if that sounds good. So, Carrie, I appreciate you getting this, uh, the, the expectations and helping work work the expectations. And you guys know both of us, so, so let yep. us know. And I've been an online teacher with a brand new school before where the kids were new to it, too. Um, communication's key. Just reach out to your kids. Let them know you're a real person and that you care, and you'll be fine. 
All right. So if uh, no other questions, then we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys. Look for the uh, look for the content in your courses in I don't know about a half an hour. Thanks, Brad. So, all right, you guys have a good night. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Bye. Bye bye.